Hi everyone, this is Sajad Shiravi. I'm a product manager at Myovision. Uh, really excited to be on the call today. So today we're going to talk about how Myovision TrafOp can help you and your agency achieve your traffic objectives. So the agenda today is going to be a quick refresher on signal performance measures in general. You might've heard of signal performance measures, SPM, ATSPMs in general. So I'd like to walk you through that. Uh, then I'm going to talk about some of the challenges with existing performance measures. Uh, I think this is an issue that uh, many others have talked about as well. But I also like to talk about how we've gone beyond the data. So not just talk about the data itself and digging through that data, but how we've approached the data in MyVision TrafOp and how we provide insights on top of that, uh, that data. Next, I'm going to talk about a really important issue about integration of performance measures into agency uh, operations and, and ultimately finish off with a customer use case example. So let's start off with the signal performance measure refresher. So in this, in this industry, the transportation uh, industry in general, uh, when you look at it, uh, these, although there's one network, but there's just so many different types of stakeholders with so many different types of problems or issues. So whoever you talk to in this space, um, they're all moving towards a common objective at the end, which is towards the public benefit. Uh, but when you look at all the different types of objectives and the problems of individuals that work in this space, deal with on a daily basis, uh, you quickly realize that how complex of a problem you're dealing with because for example from a signal tech standpoint um the signal tech cares about making sure that the uh that the signal infrastructure is working properly the the detectors the uh the controller itself the cabinets um uh, the communications they're all all sort of working working properly you have signal engineers and planners that care about um, the operation of the of the intersections, right? The performance of them. School is now in place. Are signal timing still good, good or not? We had a signal retiming on this corridor last year. Have patterns changed or not? Is it over designed? Is it under designed? And you have planners who are always looking for data, right? Data to be able to calibrate those those models. So uh, how can I ensure that I'm getting accurate data to be able to calibrate my models? At the management level, it's more about the return on investment, right? Are we creating the return on investment that was that was hoped for for these kind of projects or not? Or how do we prioritize? There's always going to be a limited amount of resource available. So how do we how do we prioritize the work appropriately to ensure that we are getting the most return out of the investment that we are we are making? And then there's the politician standpoint, which is, goes back to their own agenda, right? Um, um, ensuring that, again, at a high level, uh, we're able to achieve um, the transportation um, departments are able to achieve their objectives uh, from an emission standpoint, from an environmental standpoint, from safety standpoint, efficiency standpoint. And then ultimately, all of these are in service to uh, the general public and, and what the general public experiences that interface with the traffic network, where they're talking about or thinking about why their commutes are longer, why does the pedestrian need to wait so long at a signal, um, and, and issues of, of, of that sort. So this is where ATSBMs, SPMs, any, anything that you want to call them um, really comes into play. And uh, the idea behind signal performance measure, although it's a long acronym, the idea is that these are performance measures, it's data, to be able to help you quantify the performance of your network from various standpoints. Uh, mostly are metrics that most of the traffic engineers are familiar with, right? Things like queue length, things like level of service, things like delay, um, and then the signal controller functionality, which a lot of the signal techs are, are familiar with. Um, so it's basically that, it's just more that the data is now more commonly available 24 seven, it's actually measured from the field. Uh, so it's different in that sense that it's not being modeled, but it's actually being being measured. So it's giving you all of that information, all of that insight into your traffic network um, through data-driven approaches and from infrastructure that you already have available at your intersection. So it's actually tapping into your cabinets, tapping into the uh, 
uh, uh, the signal controller and detection that you have and came up with clever ways to be able to associate detector operations with the signal operations to be able to answer questions like, is the signal infrastructure working properly or not? Have a complaint about a long queue, is that valid or not? Is that something that's happening every day? Was that a one-time thing? Um, it, are the intersections performing to your expectations or not? And what are, what are the corridors that, that require the most uh, retiming right now? So be able to prioritize. So it's it's that data, that information, that visibility uh, about your traffic network um, that allows you and enables you to answer all of these different types of questions in a uh, efficient manner. So in order to better understand, let, let me give you an example. So um, I've, I've uh, installed this device in my house. It's a device that goes into uh, your, your uh, power cabinet in, in your house. And what it does is that uh, this device allows you to monitor your electric uh, electricity usage, right? So what it does in the app, and, and again, I'm just trying to give you an example just so you understand what ATSPMs are. In this app, essentially, it tells me, okay, what are the device what which devices in my house are, are using electricity how much are they using on a daily basis in a month uh which is devices always plugged in and seem to be always using using energy it provides insights to me as well so for example if there's some pump working for a long amount of time you probably want to go and check the the basement right uh, it provides you with alerts uh for example so again that sump pump example of it's been running for an hour uh, what do you do with it? Or, or insights, for example, uh, going back to the insights one, um, it tells you, uh, for example, that um, you're you're going to be running your washing machine during a time that uh, uh, electricity charges are higher, right? So you might want to run your washing machine during a time where it's off peak and it's a lower cost per. per uh, unit of electricity usage. And ultimately, you want to be able to report it, right? I want to see, like, are the changes that I'm making in my, in my uh, lifestyle and, and, and at my home, are those really making changes or not? So you want to be able to measure that and be able to understand that and, and monitor that. So I'm giving this example just as a comparison, right? So when we talk about signal performance measures, ATSPMs, um, essentially what we're saying is that that electricity cabinet that we're talking about in your house that's your traffic network and then this little red box is is atsvms now you don't necessarily need hardware in order to run atsvms that's that's a good thing because you've already invested in controllers and you already have communications to your to your intersections so essentially the rest is just the software layer that comes off so atsvms in this case is just the software layer comes on top of your network and is able to extract all of that information to similar to the example that I gave right now, be able to give you insight and visibility into the performance of your network on a daily basis so you can ensure that, uh, uh, that you are achieving your, your objectives. But there are challenges, let's not forget that. So um, not all ATSPM systems are, are created equal. So the fact that and different vendors talk about like ATSPMs, we have ATSPMs. It doesn't necessarily mean that they all have the same thing. And the reason behind that is that in a survey, for example, that, that we recently did um, with, uh, uh, with a sample size of 350 people, a 40-60 split between public versus private attendees, um, 78% of the respondents expressed that ATSVMs are useful, but it's either difficult or requires too much time um, to analyze. And it's fair, and it's very fair, right? Because signal performance measures, imagine you have 12 different types of measures for each movement at an intersection. So you have queue length, average delay, you have arrivals on red and green, you have pedestrian delay, you have uh, the split monitor, you have split failures, there's all sorts of different types of metrics that you have for each individual movement. You have 12 movements at an intersection, 12 movements, 12 charts, hundreds of intersections in your network. It becomes extremely overwhelming to be able to really dig into that data and find what, what you need. There could be limited amount of usage that could you could have with that data when you're sort of looking at things in a very targeted way. 
but it's extremely difficult to wrap your head around um, all of that, that data. And this is not just from us. Um, there's in fact a, one of the uh, do good documentations on ATSBMs. It's called, uh, or the FHWA documentation is called Evaluating the Benefits and Costs of Implementing ATSBMs. Um, one of the paragraphs, it talks about uh, MCDOT's um, experience in using ATSBMs, where uh, they talk about the fact that the low level that the data is reported, like at the individual level, the need to orient the performance measure towards an actual task or need for additional training to bring TMC operators are, are all sort of the drawbacks of these. And uh, one of the suggestions that MCDOT appears to be uh, making here is that wait for the further development of the open source system or to be able to first address that through through their own sort of consultants. So you can see here that there's a clear problem here where um, initially there was the problem of not enough data, and now there's just the problem of uh, too much data. So how does MyVision Trafop actually address this problem? So let's look at something that the Federal Highway Administration talks about uh, the hierarchy of, of, of needs when it comes to, to the travel to, to the traffic signal systems operations and maintenance. So in this hierarchy, it's a hierarchy of needs, and what it essentially um, talks about is that in order to ensure that you're able to reach that holy grail, which is sort of system control you want to achieve on the top here, you need to ensure that you're sort of building on top of a foundation and not just sort of without really necessarily addressing the problems from the bottom, uh, starting to talk about sort of the, the top parts, which is usually the case, right? People talk about optimization, split cycles, offsets, that sort of thing. That's, that's mostly at the local control and system control. But there's more to signal operations than just those variables to optimize for. First of all, it's data insights, right? So the way that we will approach this is that in order to ensure that whatever other information that you're getting on top and, and be able to make the decisions that you need to make, you need to have good data. And the first piece is that, that we ensure is that we provide you with insights about the quality of the data that is coming in. So data that is missing specific parts, for example, that's not good data, right? Um, or it has accuracy issues. So these are the type of insights that we provide at the data level in order to ensure that what we are telling you is actually correct. So the first thing that needs to happen is from a data standpoint, if there are insights, if there are issues, you need to be able to address that. None of the other issues matter if the data is not good. And this is the case for the entire hierarchy. So as you're going up, the bottom pieces need to be corrected in order to be able to go one step higher. So other insights like equipment, for example, do you have the right equipment in place? You have maintenance, is the, is the equipment that you have in place operating properly or not? You have operational issues. Controllers are, uh, traffic controllers are complicated devices. There are lots of things that could go wrong in these in these controllers you might have variables in there that have been set by default or have been changed without necessarily anyone documenting those so there could be some very obvious impactful operational issues happening that you are unaware of the other piece is configuration insights if there is no if the association between the phase and the detector is a, isn't isn't accurate none of the performance insights or optimizations that could come on top of that really matters because you need to ensure that the right phase is associated with the right detection and that's the only way that you can make sure that uh, uh, that the data that you're getting for the next level is is accurate so i just want to emphasize the fact that when we talk about insights it's that right so you have 12 different metrics and then you multiply that by 12 movements and you multiply that by hundreds of minutes that's hundreds and hundreds of uh, of, of charts that one needs to look into. But at the end, what is the purpose of all of those charts? Is The purpose is to ensure that this hierarchy of need is, is being met from the bottom to top. And these are the type of insights that, that we provide. So the issue is that, and, and, and the, the, um, the total number of insights that we actually produce is 
uh, around 60 insights. So 60 different insights that you can get from data, equipment, maintenance, operation, all the way to, to performance. These are more than 60 different types of insights. So this is, that could also get overwhelming, right? Um, initially, when, when a system like this is run on a city, the first issue that really comes up is that, um, wow, there's a lot of issues. What, how do I prioritize? So even not only be able to sort of funnel that from data into, into insight, but also be able to categorize the insights into the, into the level of severity which is why we've taken an approach where we actually provide you and we've worked with our customers to be able to classify the types of problems in the field and type of, type of insights into different types of categories. So the categories are degraded, slightly degraded, suboptimal, and optimal. So as you can see from degraded state would be the ones that, the types of issues that need immediate attention all the way to suboptimal, which means that it's important, but at some point you need to be able to address those. So this is the way that, again, reflects the hierarchy of needs where you wanna make sure that you're addressing the base problems first and the main problems first before you sort of go up the, uh, up the hierarchy. The next issue is about the visualization. So inside the software, how we visualize this information is that through this methodology of system states that we just talked about and 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 talked about the uh, the severity of the issues uh we provide information on a map so someone who's looking at this map can easily identify and see where the main problems are which are where the the which are the intersections that are in a degraded state that need to be addressed right now, which ones are slightly degraded, suboptimal, and be able to allocate the work to the to the right people. So by clicking on each of these problems, you can actually see a breakdown of the type of issue that we're identifying, which charts they are they are referring to. So if someone's interested in sort of doing some more investigation of exactly the time that this is happening, exactly be able to identify. Uh, the underlying cause of an issue before they send someone out. Now that's when you get into data, right? So it's it's not the other way around. We don't want you to go and sift through data to be able to identify that problem. We tell you the problem, and now you can actually look at a chart and be able to exactly tell uh, what that problem is and be able to uh, to address that. Um, another great thing about the system is that you can actually click on a specific type of problem. Uh, a, a signal state and and you can filter based on that so you want to get rid of the the optimal ones i know they are in the optimal state and we haven't found any issues based on those 60 criteria that we check on a daily basis um what you can do here is actually click on a specific intersection um that you're seeing uh that that is in a degraded state and and be able to filter uh the ones that that you care about most Another way to look at the data as well is through um, the insights dashboard. So for all the different types of problems, so you can see, for example, here, these are the vehicle detector problems for maintenance insights. So maintenance insights, we have signal issues, we have phase issues, we have PED issues, and we have the vehicle detector issues. So all of these are classified and categorized, and you can see all of these different problems. So each card represents one of these problems, and they are categorized based on the type of problem. So you can see detector stop working, detector is stuck, it's chattering, it's intermittently stuck, intermittently ch chattering. Maybe sometimes detector has low volume, we're detecting erratic behavior on it, or it's deteriorating, right? So even be able to proactively, ident proactively identify that. So exactly when those are happening, which approach they're happening on, the movement that's happening on, all this information is available, especially to the maintenance folks that sort of want more information and, and to be able to, correctly identify and diagnose the problem. From another standpoint, we have dashboards available. So again, it's all about being able to summarize the data in a way where it's usable. Uh, so I don't want you to go in and, and look into charts all day, right? So uh, being able to look at this information at a very high level and be able to zoom into the areas of your interest is really the objective here. So for a specific corridor, you have access to what we call a corridor performance uh, uh, dashboard. And all those different metrics around delay and approach volume and split failures, you can easily see that on a map, which intersections have the highest amount, 
we exactly see which those intersections are, what time throughout the day they're experiencing those issues, and for the duration of the date that, that you're selecting. So very, very simplified way of, of looking at the problems. From another standpoint, and then this speaks to all those different uh, roles that, that we talked about, right? All those different personas that we talked about that care about different levels. So uh, again, um, here you have the intersection dashboard, which is exactly telling you what is the level of service of this intersection? What is the estimated total cost that this intersection is causing? How much CO2 it's causing? What is the annualized cost of that? And approach volume, delay per vehicle information across the uh, sort of the, the intersection across time. So all of this information is also available. And again, um, not needing to necessarily dig into the data to be able to identify these issues, but be able to summarize this information in a readily easy to understand format. Um, if you do have access to uh, the Waze uh, Connected Citizen Program, I think that's the name these days, um, you're able to understand exactly uh, what the travel times are throughout the corridor, be able to compare the travel times from one duration to another, uh, and eastbound, westbound, or northbound, uh, southbound. So be able to compare all these metrics together, again, be able to identify do before after studies is uh, super helpful to be able to do that. So all those metrics, again, all available in a uh, holistic way and in a user-friendly format. Another issue that I'd like to talk about is um, the value of the data is important. The value of the system is important. Again, we talked about how uh, it's difficult to be able to sift through a lot of data. You need to be able to have access to insights that are, act, that are actually giving you information about where the problems are, what the problem is, and um, providing you with uh, really finding those needles in a, in a haystack, right? Um, but again, once those problems are surfaced and, and identified, that's one issue, but really be able to take that information and creating an impact in another one, which is why we talk about integration of performance measures into uh, the agency's uh, business operations. Um, there's a very uh, informative document uh, from NCHRP on ATSBMs. And one of the recommendations that this NCHRP report has is on uh, the integration of signal performance measures into what's called the traffic signal management plans. Uh, so it's extremely important to ensure that uh, um, signal performance measures aren't just considered as something that's um, that's sort of siloed, right? This is this is not an extra piece of work. This is something that will help you understand, this is something that will help you understand the state of your signals, something that will help you manage your traffic signals on daily basis. This is something that will help you uh, achieve your objectives or your signal management plan. So this is why the, um, in fact, the, uh, the report, the NCHRP report actually recommends weaving signal performance measures into traffic signal management plans, because that's how you can mention how uh, some of the objectives are going to be achieved, how things are going to be monitored, and um, and and some of the, the, the sort of the technologies that, that, that are going to be used to be able to achieve that. Another area that the NCHRP report talks about, and that, that is in line with uh, the, the purpose of uh, integrating uh, signal performance measures into, into agency operations is about uh, the maturity model. So uh, this is something that the Federal Highway Administration, FHWA, talks about. It's the uh, four levels of maturity and uh, sort of a level one to, to, to four. And the idea here really, really is that different agencies could be at different levels, right? So they're all trying to sort of get up a level and, and, and move forward and becoming completely managed, becoming data-driven. So not all the agencies need to start from becoming data-driven. So not all the agencies need to start from making decisions based on data because you need to ensure that um, all the organizations, uh, there are other elements to it, right? So there are other organizational um, 
functions that that need to be aligned with this so that's that's an, that's an, that's another story but what i'm trying to get at here is that regardless of the level that you that your agency is in there's always a value in data to be able to move one step forward um if you are a measured agency you can become data driven if you are a documented agency that have some processes in place become a measured agency so my vision traf up will help you understand what your current situation is understand what your uh, the performance of your network looks like. And if you had an ad hoc agency who's sort of curious about using data, how you can become more engaged with the data and more comfortable with, with the data. So uh, definitely feel free to reach out to us. We can, we can walk you through how we can help your agency move one step uh, forward. Before I end this webinar, I'd like to go through one of the customer examples that has been anonymized uh, to respect the, the customer's privacy here. Um, so one of the uh, uh, use cases uh, that I'd like to walk you through is um, a daily insights report that indicating that there was an intermittent problem with the pedestrian detector. So we talked about uh, one of the insights that we produce, the hierarchy of needs, right? So the hierarchy of needs there's a piece called maintenance right so there's a, there's one of the insights that we provide is maintenance and that's the maintenance of the signal and, and the detectors and one of the issues that we identify one of those 60 problems that we identify it's called uh, uh the detector where, where the, uh, when the detector is intermittently stuck and in this case it's a pedestrian detector that that's happening so uh the 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 software is exactly telling you that you know what like uh, this is a pet detector exclusively on this phase seems to be occurring quite quite frequently so in order to confirm it so again the, you can acknowledge the problem or you can click on a button which will take you to the chart and the chart would exactly tell you uh what's what's going on here right so it provides you with exactly finds that needle in the haystack and brings that to your attention that look yeah seems like this pedestrian detector early in the morning seems to be a lot of cases where um, the pedestrian delay, uh, the pedestrian is, is the pedestrian signal is being called. So all of these green bars represent when a pedestrian call is being made. So 3 a.m. So you can sort of see that it's intermittently sometimes being called. Sometimes uh, what's what's really going on here? Why why is the pedestrian um, signal being called here? So what happened here, the, uh, the agency actually went in and wanted to exactly pin down um, to identify which detector is the problematic uh, pedestrian detector. So you have phase two, you have three, and you have one. So uh, you can actually query within the system and identify the pet detector that is the pet detect number one. And you can exactly see how many events um, uh, has been logged for that specific detector. So in this case, 4,000, like the pedestrian one was called 4,000 times on, on June 10. So ultimately what happened was that uh, based on this information, time that this is happening, and, and, and one of that's, that's one of the important issues is that some of these problems uh, don't happen all the time throughout the day. So specific times throughout the day, this is happening. So ensuring that you're sending your your maintenance crew at the right time to the uh, to the intersection and in this case it was very interesting that uh, um, all the buttons were checked and and, and changed um, and also there was some ants that were found on uh, pedestrian uh, number two so this is uh, a pretty interesting one where um, even the least expected uh, problems uh, can can come up and and that's why it's important to be able to uh to really go in and and investigate these these problems and might this might speak to why the problem was intermittent um i appreciate everyone's time uh thank you for for listening to this webinar hopefully um i've been able to shed some light on um sort of questions or so your curiosity about my vision traf op but feel free to uh to contact us uh, myvision.com slash contact dash us um, or feel free to contact me directly using the email below sgravi at myvision.com
gmail.com. Uh, happy to, to answer any questions that you have. Feel free to reach out and have a great rest of your day.